It's every lottery player's dream. I'm Kim Haggerty, and I won $27 million. It's a little different driving to Walmart in the Ferrari. I'm a multi-millionaire street sweeper. For some, it's time to move up. The best thing about the house are the views. A lot of people are like, your mom won the lottery? Oh, yeah. A million-dollar win can rock your world. Oh, yeah! For this guy, it's just another win. 21,000, the million dollar raffle. I was on a cruise ship, I won 4,000. But a stolen lottery ticket can turn a win into a nightmare. It's dog eat dog, and I'm gonna get my portion and forget you. We are the Pickle 15 that won $207 million in the Ohio lottery. Yeah, yeah! yeah! Piqua, Ohio. A small town hard hit by the recession. Pick with small town USA, uh, 20,000 people, working class city, big on blue collar work, uh, the blue collar work that's still left. Here, a close knit group of city street sweepers and paper drivers live paycheck to paycheck and played a weekly lottery pool. We always talked about winning the lottery or finding a big bag of money and what we'd do with it. Every Friday, street sweeper Loyal Davis took the group's pool money to buy lottery tickets at shops around town, including the local supermarket. One Saturday in 2008, word was out, someone in Piqua hit the Mega Millions lottery. Was it us? Was it us? Was it you? Did you have extra tickets? Did you get them up there? Where'd you get your tickets? Piqua Street Department worker Art Rudy called Loyal to find out if he had checked the tickets bought for the office pool. Loyal's wife, Lindsay, answered the phone. I was like, please tell me Loyal bought some tickets from Kroger's. And she goes, yeah, we bought tickets there. Here, let me read you the numbers. Art's reading the numbers off. She's like, yes, yes. Oh, my God. She's jumping up and down, spinning around. And I told Loyal, I'll say, if you was a girl, I'd kiss you. <laughs> Dude, you're not going to kiss me. We won $207 million. It's like a dream. I mean, my wife kept pinching me, hit me. Are we dreaming? I was like, no, we're awake. It was the largest jackpot in Ohio history. The group of city workers became known as the Fortunate 15. This is all right there! Yeah! Woo the Fortunate 15 agreed to take their winnings as a lump sum. After taxes, each one of them walked away with over $5 million. That's a lot of money. It really is. It was a Mega Millions Christmas present for the winners and a timely blessing for their hometown. The win gave down on its luck Piqua a $2 million tax windfall for the town and school system. Piqua was kind of down. A lot of factories closed. The town definitely needed money. I think we did our share of helping. <laughs> and just about every business in town wanted to help the winners celebrate. It was a Lamborghini dealership. You know, it's congratulations, lottery winners. We have the next car. And they got 15 in stock. There were no takers on the Lamborghini, but the winners sure bought some sweet wheels. One thing to know about Art, he enjoys life in the fast lane. He's the leather jacket, sleeveless Harley guy. He racked up over $400,000 on smoking hot rides. Everything we have in the driveway and the carports, we have your Ford, Lincoln, MKS, Harley Davidson. Project I'm working on building. Ford Mustang, Shelby Cobra Mustang, two Dodge Chargers, two convertible power wheel Mustangs. Oh, and a Maserati. The Maserati is the car Art bought for his wife, Jolie. I have never seen a Maserati, other than a picture in a book, maybe. It caught my eye, and I really liked it. Because when you drive into town, everybody stops. And if you stop, you'll see a lot of people get out and take pictures. It's a car that ain't seen much on the road. Art may love the open road, but at heart, he's a family man. You've been watching Papaw too much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> For his wife and kids, a brand new house on a 40-acre property. Art lavished gifts on his three kids. They got money for college, a paintball course, and a killer pool. It's got all the bells and whistles. It's got fiber optics. It's got eight fountains that shoot out into the center of it. It's got the water slide. Cindy Hirschberger used to drive a city salt truck. Now she drives a Ferrari. It's a little different driving to Walmart in the Ferrari. It's a whole different life. Cindy, 
She loves the Ferrari. Uh, Cindy's got a bit of a lead foot. They want to see us race. That's never going to happen. Art would like that. Cindy's not going to do it. The lottery win allows Cindy and her boyfriend, Tom Lillycock, to see the world. So far, I think I get the record for traveling. And then there's fellow winner, former paver driver, Scott Bradley. He bought a 68-acre property. It's a sportsman's paradise. Roughly 25 farm, 25 wooded, and about 18 acres that I mow and take care of. Yeah, this is my little piece of heaven. We got tennis courts, extra things fishing. We got three ponds on the property. We hit golf balls a lot. A little bit right. I've come full circle. I started out as a caddy. I used to sneak on the country club and dive in their ponds. <laughs> and uh, two hours of diving would result in about 2,000 golf balls. So now uh, I'll purchase them. <laughs> <laughs> Money can make you happy. It, it can. <laughs> it really does. Scott's wife, Trish, got her lifelong wish. The chance to decorate their new 6,000 square foot home. We kind of think it's like our lodge type home. You know, it's not brand spanking new, but this is what we like. I couldn't be happier with it. We had Buckeye before we hit the lottery. We wonder if he's noticed an, an upgrade. He certainly seems to have adjusted well. For Scott's sunstruck daughters. We did purchase a tanning bed. Use it constantly. And there's a supersized home theater. Hit the button, and it's a slow ride into ecstasy. Life couldn't get any better. It's in it. If it can, I can't imagine how. But for city street sweeper Loyal Davis, life hasn't changed all that much since the win. So far, he's spent the least of all the winners. After winning the lottery, uh, my two big purchases, one would be my Escalade and my house. And there's another big difference between Loyal and the rest of the group. Retired. 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 Sorry to say, I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still working, yeah. I'm a multi-millionaire street sweeper. Loyal decided to put off retirement and continue sweeping the streets of Piqua. Loyal came into work every day with a smile on his face. I've never seen anybody so gung-ho and optimistic in my life. So maybe that's why he's still there. I don't mind it. What else am I going to do? He's missing out on a lot of yep. fun. It's fun every day. He's got to go to work every day. <laughs> yes. Every day to us is a Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> The group think I'm crazy. <laughs> and I just tell them, hey, my time's coming. I've got kids in school still. You know, I just can't pick up and take off and go. It's just not right. Loyal's life is still focused on his kids. He's determined to keep them grounded in reality. So you guys ready for this weekend's tournament? Yep. Yeah. Ready to go home? Let's go home and get ready to get something to eat. But Loyal's lottery win did grant his daughter Taja one childhood ah, wish. Ah. When I was younger, I would always say that when I grow up, I want to marry a millionaire, but now I don't have to. My investor said by the time I'm 30, I'll be a millionaire on my own. Ah! We gotta play something I can win at. The Piqua 15 are thrilled with the win. Right there! Yeah! Woohoo! But why are some of their co workers downright angry? Next thing I know, we're being sued. If we lose, they were wanting 20 million. Meet the guy who's riding a winning streak that defies all odds. I tend to win the lottery very often. It's ridiculous. I mean, he comes in with a smile, and I just say, how much? 850 here, 2500 here. And it's every lottery player's nightmare. He bought the winning ticket, but someone else cashed it in. I never suspected this guy had cheated me. What percentage of Americans believe winning the lottery is the only way to get rich? This fall. Mommy. It's more than just clean. This needs a facelift. $15 in the Ohio lottery. What percentage of Americans believe winning the lottery is the only way to get rich? 33%. 
are the Pickle 15 that won $207 million in the Ohio Lottery. Just days after 15 city street workers won the Ohio Lottery Mega Millions, a lawsuit threatened to take it all away. When the winners returned to work on Monday, there was no red carpet. Three of our fellow co-workers pulled in in a city vehicle. I guess they had been together all night. And didn't say anything to us, got out, walked straight in the office, didn't speak to us. We knew something was up right there. Four co-workers were suing the PICWA 15. Lawsuit was filed December 22nd. Nice Christmas present. The plaintiff sued for a whopping $40 million in damages, stunning the winners and the town of PICWA. When I first heard the lawsuit is when I picked it up in the newspaper. Here's a group that's excited, and now they're going to get, get pasted because uh, now they have to fight a lawsuit over it. We lose. They were wanting $20 million apiece. And that's a lot more money than what we got. The plaintiffs insisted they were regular players, but missed the chance to play on the day of the win. Our boss, you know, he said more than one time, no, it's a waste of money, besides that. If you win, I'll sue you. The winner's attorney says the lottery pool was simple. To play, you put your dollar in an envelope and sign your name. The truth about how this pool worked, which was very simply, you either had your money in or you didn't. You had to play to win. Turns out the fortunate 15 were more than just lucky. They had the legal equivalent of an ace in a hole. We had all of the records, all of the tickets, and all of the sign-up contributions envelopes. So we spent hours and hours going through them so that we could reconstruct the, the practices and customs of this group. Those records were proof that the plaintiffs were not regular players and had no claim to the winnings. When they realized that he had every sign-up sheet for five years, you could almost see their jaws drop. That evidence signaled the end of the lawsuit. The lawsuit has been the one negative out of winning the lottery. I, I can't pretend to understand why they did it, and uh, it's changed everything as far as those friendships. And for Loyal, the only winner still on the job, hostility around the office can run high. You know, I just go in and do my job. We don't really talk. Unless it's work-related, that's it. To me, it's like, whatever. You know. Grow up, get over it. He's a constant reminder to the people that sued us. And he's got to make their day a little worse every time they see him. So I hope Loyal stays there for a long time. <laughs> With their legal troubles behind them, the fortunate 15 could finally relax and enjoy their winnings. Well, it was frivolous, and it's a shame they chose that route. Because they've lost 15 pretty good friends that have pretty nice places to hang out and party at. I see. Even my That's how I look at this right And the winners get together at least once a month to enjoy each other's company and their toys. <laughs> you got anything that could keep up with this, Art? It is a really sweet ride. That is sharp. Don't slobber on it. <laughs> one year after winning, the group of former street department workers is closer than ever. Great group of guys. I agree. That's we were friends before and we're friends now. We, I think we will be. Yeah. Always yeah. Out, had yeah. a good time together before and we will continue to do so. We will see you guys. But we can't afford to do a lot, a lot more, more now. <laughs> My name is Anthony Broccoli, and I'm the luckiest guy in Rhode Island. Yeah, right there. How much you put in? Four five. Anthony Broccoli is owner and operator of Brock's Auto Body Shop in Johnston, Rhode Island. It's a family operation where he works side by side with his sons, Aaron and Avery. Yeah, did you start it? Yeah, I did. You pulled that after you started? Yes. Yeah, pretty important. I'm one of those few people in this world that I absolutely love what I do. I've been doing auto body uh, most of my life. I was born into it. In 2008, Anthony entered the Rhode Island Lottery's New Year's Eve million dollar raffle. 105995. Make sure you check your tickets to see if you're $1 million richer. But Anthony Broccoli didn't check his raffle ticket until New Year's Day. The next morning, checked it, and it was the matching numbers. Literally sat in awe for I can't remember how long saying, Oh my God, we got the winning ticket. He says, Avery, you're going to remember this for the rest of your life. And I just think, Oh God, I'm in trouble. I did something wrong. And he's just like, we want a million dollars. Anthony got a New Year's treat of one million dollars. 
The Broccoli's couldn't cash in their winnings until the next day. That meant a nerve-wracking night guarding the ticket. So my wife uh, stayed home, locked the doors, don't light the fireplace, don't light any candles. Morning couldn't come fast enough. The family cashed in the million-dollar ticket first thing in the morning. After taxes, they walked away with $680,000. A gift from God. <laughs> I mean, literally, you know. The first thing Anthony and his wife did was invest in their son's college education. I think it means a lot to him, but he can send us to school to do what we want. They'll hopefully come out and have a better chance than most. Then, this auto body shop owner bought a gift for himself. This is a 2010 Chevy Camaro SS 6.2 liter, 420 horse, right out of the box. I've been doing auto body since I was a little kid. I'm 49 years old. I have been restoring other people's classics, hot rods, my entire life. So after all this time, I went and bought myself a Camaro. So a lot of car for the money. Anthony loves this Camaro. I'm starting to get jealous, actually. He's actually named it, so <laughs> he's named her Christine. For most lottery players, a million-dollar payday would be a once-in-a-lifetime event. But not for Anthony Broccoli. He's on a first-name basis with the staff at the Rhode Island Lottery Office. Hello, Hi, sweetheart. Anthony. How are you? Very good. How are you doing? Good. When I go to the, the, the lottery commission, I'll get a hug and kiss when I go in the morning. Hi, nice to see you. I tend to win the lottery very often. 1,000, 2,500, 1,500, 21,000. I won the million-dollar raffle. It's always different amounts. I was on a cruise ship. I won $4,000 on a, on a poker machine. I got two winners this time, 950. Donna Golick, lottery commission. I think he is on a winning streak. He seems to win quite often, so he's a lucky guy. Very nice win, as usual. They find it amazing, some people. Some people uh, disbelieve it. And I always tease him because he'll come home with another coffee mug, and I must have like a dozen. <laughs> <laughs> say, uh, I won the lottery. And usually people, when they come over for a party and we have coffees, I take them out and they're like, how many of these mugs do you have? Thank you, dear. Thank you. <laughs> take take care. care. Bye. Good to see you, too. Hope I see you very soon. Take care. Right. Bye, 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 Anthony's racked up over a dozen wins in three years on scratch-offs, raffles, but mostly his secret is playing Keno at his family's favorite restaurant. 47, no. I get the 40, oh, I get the 49, I'm wrong. I don't know why I play Keno, because out of all the gambling games out there, it's absolutely the worst odds there possibly are. The higher the odds, the luckier I get. Now, it's just hard to explain. In Keno, players choose from one to 10 numbers, or spots, from a field of 80, hoping to match the computer's picks on the video screen. One, 10, 12, 16, 17, no. The more numbers that match, the higher the payout. I play 10 spots. Some people laugh at me playing 10 spots. I can't even get two numbers, but, you know, at least when lightning strikes, I, I end up with money. 60 bucks I won in this ticket. Anthony's lucky streak defies the odds and baffles his friends. It's ridiculous. I mean, it comes in with a smile, and I just say, how much? 850 here, 2,500 here. <laughs> Unbelievable. I don't know anybody else like him. Just in the three years I've known Brock, he's, he's won at least over 10 times. Good hits. Mom keeps saying that she thinks there's something going on between me and Donna. I keep winning so I can go see her. I think that he's probably the luckiest guy I've ever met, and hopefully it's genetic. Just a little bit of something to hold you over till we do eat dinner. A little bit. The Broccoli's have been riding high since oh, Anthony's like winning streak. But everyone has had their hand out, even Anthony's customers. He'd actually do repairs, and people would say, well, do I really have to pay for this? I mean, you want all that money. Remember Karen McHale? I want a $1.2 million house for 50 bucks! She nearly ended up bankrupt. You'll never guess what she's up to now. Are you tired of clean clothes that just don't smell? 85 pounds. Okay, what? from experience. Visiting Paris. To the payday. My name is Anthony Brock. Halloween was baking? It's disgusting and so wonderful. All new Halloween Baking Championship, Monday at 9 on Food Network. My name is Anthony Broccoli, and I won a million dollars from the Rhode Island Lottery.
A $1 million raffle win in 2009 cemented Anthony Broccoli's reputation as the luckiest guy in Rhode Island. But after the payday, his good fortune turned into a curse. He was harassed for months by friends and strangers, begging for money. If there was one thing that was the worst was the attention it brought to us. Letters would come to the shop daily asking for money. Someone had spent $75,000 on credit cards for Christmas and could we pay that off. For months, I used to get up and go to the market early because people would recognize your face and they'd follow you out to the parking lot. And that went on for months and months. Anthony had actually lost 25 pounds in one year because of stress. Some of Anthony's customers seemed to expect a free ride. He'd actually do repairs, and people would say, well, do I really have to pay for this? I mean, you want all that money. I've actually had some people come in and on jobs that I did, like, literally a couple of years ago, want me to give them the money back on the job I did. Some people did just assume that um, they didn't have to pay. I mean, I don't know where they would possibly get that from. But a year after the $1 million win, things have settled down. Jump in this car, start it up, yeah. put the car in drive, get for the break. Friday nights are still Kino nights for the Broccoli family. <laughs> Anthony continues to play and hopes his lucky streak continues. There were months when, you know, I don't win anything. And that's always when I get a little nervous. I stop backing off, I don't play. I, I kind of always consider, how long can my luck last? 8.50, guys. Then I'll play and then uh, I'll win again. I wasn't here more than five minutes. I ran my Kino tag. I won um, 850 bucks, which means I have to go back and see Donna. Her face will be priceless when I walk in the door. You know, people say, why do you play? Why wouldn't I? <laughs> I, I, I constantly win. Remember me? I'm Karen McHale, and I won a $1.2 million home for 50 bucks. When we last saw a Colorado resident, Karen McHale, she just won a dream home in a raffle. Even though the house was across the country in Maryland, Karen believed she'd hit pay dirt. When I won my $1.2 million house, of course I expect to be a millionaire, which didn't happen. <laughs> Karen found out the raffle house came with a $250,000 tax bill, a price she couldn't afford. She put it up for sale in a toxic market. So my $1.2 million home um, actually was sold for $450,000 cash. Uh, we walked away with $200,000, and that's nothing to complain about off a $50 raffle ticket. Karen used the extra cash to help pay for her son's wedding and honeymoon. My husband's truck was about $25,000. My greenhouse was $5,000. I live up in the mountains of Colorado and you can't grow anything outside up here. So I'm really excited to have this greenhouse. Always ready to turn lemons into lemonade, Karen's now back in the same business that almost ruined her. But there's a twist. People who want to sell their house put their house in the contest. Then everyone else who wants to win the house has to send us their story, a page or less, there is a um, hundred dollar entry fee, and that's how we raise the money when we pay off the mortgage, and then we pay those taxes. The people who are trying to win a home don't have two hundred thousand dollars laying around to pay taxes. Neither did I. Although the contest has only been running for a few months, the group already has several houses up for bidding. Thanks. Amy Tompkins' house was on the market for six months without any takers. So when Karen presented the contest for change, Amy liked what she heard. Personally. My husband and I, being this homeowner, what better way to leave town than to have someone awarded this home? Truly, someone's dream come true. Amy's house is valued at $1.4 million. That means Contest for Change needs 14,000 entrants at 100 bucks a pop. And so far, that's not happening. We started some uh, internet advertising. We're doing some local radio stuff now. What has frustrated me is that I really thought we'd put the houses in there, and within a month, they'd be gone. And that hasn't happened. We have 25 entries on each house now in the last month. And so I need 100 entries a day. Always the optimist, Karen's convinced that once word of the contest gets out, the entries will start rolling in. It's going to take off, and it's going to be great. We're going to do thousands of houses, and we're going to be all over the United States, and we're just going to rock and roll. 
I wanted to be able to walk in, turn around, walk out, and be clean. You'll never guess how much this ice skater millionaire spent on a shower. A clerk steals a customer's winning lottery ticket. The Texas Lottery told Willis, unbelievably, that he wasn't the winner. It was just short and sweet and to the point. You didn't produce the ticket. What's the biggest lottery win in history? I do anything to hear. What's the biggest lottery win in history? The world's biggest payout is a Mega Millions jackpot worth $390 million. I'm Kim Haggerty, and I won $27 million in the Colorado lottery. Kim Haggerty got lucky with the lottery, but she had her share of heartbreaks as well. Her passion for ice skating began at the age of two. By high school, she was an accomplished pair skater, intent on making it to the Olympics. But a tragic car accident all but ended her skating career. My partner and I were heading back to the ice rink to start practicing for that week. He had fallen asleep on our way to the rink, and he crashed into a telephone pole. Broke my back, I had a spinal fusion, and I was in a body cast for about six months. With a promising skating career cut short, Kim went to college and to work for six bucks an hour. Then, almost 18 years ago, at the age of 22, Kim made a spur-of-the-moment decision that would change her life and allow her to return to the ice. It happened when she stopped at a convenience store to pick up a few groceries. I bought my little items, and then I went up to the counter, and I just asked three quick picks. I didn't think twice about it. Hours later, Kim turned on the TV and watched the winning numbers come up. I just kind of sat there like, ah, oh, that really didn't happen. I must have the wrong numbers. And so I waited and I checked him again and I was like, okay, wow. Kim won $27 million in the Colorado Lottery. That's an annual after-tax income of $530,000 for 25 years. The day of the win, Kim offered her fiance, Dan, the chance to sign a lottery check, legally entitling him to half the winnings. I had a little you know, devil on one shoulder and angel on the other one. Somehow, money could screw up our relationship. So I didn't sign it and you know, chose rightly. I mean, we've been married for 18 years. After the win, newlyweds Kim and Dan headed for the Colorado Rockies. The one thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to move to a mountain town and buy a big, beautiful home. That was what I wanted. And that was from the very first day. Flash forward 15 years, and Kim, Dan, and their three children are living a dream life. Hey, we're gaining on you. Come on, Dan. I have a fabulous life. I have a great family, three kids. I love the town that I live in. Now, the family lives in a $1.2 million dream house in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. We live in a mountain mansion on 35 acres. The house itself is beautiful, high ceilings. The kitchen, the dining room, and the living room are all open. It's, it's just a wonderful place to live. The best thing about the house are the views, and there is a view from every room. They can check out the ski runs just by looking out the window. Some of my favorite runs, we can see from this view, um, we've got white out. We have the very top of Storm Peak, and then you always come down heavenly days to get home. Kim splurged on a few big ticket items. A $20,000 Italian dining table. And what has to be the ultimate shower. There it is, the car wash. I decided that I needed to have four body sprays, a rain shower, a handheld, and a steam shower, of course. And I went top notch, and I just picked up the best of the best. And then so, yeah, about $35,000 is about what I spent on it. But to me, well worth the money, something I have to do every day, and I absolutely love it. Winning the lottery meant something even greater for Kim. 
It gave her the financial freedom to get back into ice skating, even after a devastating injury. I actually got back on the ice after. I knew I would always skate again, because that's my personality. And I wasn't going to let anyone else tell me anything different. Kim no longer skates competitively. Instead, she's a coach at the Steamboat Springs Figure Skating Club. OK, so the first thing we're going to start out with is I want you guys to do three fast crossovers, and then you're going to hold a nice landing position. Now these better be good. Since then, she's mentored hundreds of children. It grew into a, just an amazing program, and I've seen so many girls go through this program and experience skating and love it as much as I have. That was better when you went in, and then did you feel that leg open up? Beautiful. Kim's investments guarantee her own kids money for college, but no free ride after that. Kayla, bend. Stretch, Hannah. Turn the toe out. Turn it out. A lot of people are like, your mom in the lottery? Oh my gosh. We try to be casual and just say, yeah, my mom won the lottery and it's, it's great. <laughs> They're still gonna have to work for the rest of their life and if they wanna maintain this lifestyle, they've gotta provide that for themselves. And, I was talking to Katie and Kim and Dan have a plan. It could be risky, but it could also prepare their kids for a very different kind of life. It's gonna be unlike any other restaurant in Steamboat. We think it's a slam dunk. This lottery winner had his ticket stolen. It has been investigated. The tickets, play slips that you had, has proven you to win them. But the thief cashed in the ticket and skipped the country. No. After death. Ashley with that. Oh. An immune support. Finger sticks. Husband <laughs> Dan are. Kim Haggerty and I won $27 million. Sunday night at 9. Oh. Kim Haggerty and I won $27 million in the Colorado Lottery. And coming to an end. So she and her husband, Dan, are developing a new source of income. They're betting. Kim Haggerty and I won. Sunday night at 9. Oh. Kim Haggerty and I won $27 million in the Colorado Lottery. And coming to an end. So she and her husband, Dan, are developing a new source of income. They're betting their future on the restaurant business. It's going to be unlike any other restaurant in Steamboat. We have an upper deck and a lower deck that both overlook the Yampa River. So I was thinking maybe we should put music in that corner. It's just a special place. Three million dollars in a venture. They're just three months away from opening. It's pretty much got it. We've had to redo all the electric, all the plumbing, whole new kitchen, all new decks. Yeah, it's it's been quite a project. I have to say, though, it's been really, really fun. And then we could serve a, a biscuit with a large salad or something, you know? So, and like, then... comfort food with a twist. Yes. I love it. I love the people we're working with. Cool. Well, I'll send you guys a copy of this. OK, okay. thanks. Nice yeah. care. Despite the risks, Dan and Kim believe the restaurant is worth it. They hope that working in a family business will help their children learn the value of a dollar. They're still going to have to work for the rest of their life, and if they want to maintain this lifestyle, they've got to provide that for themselves. We've already set up trust funds that are strictly for education, and their money is based on going to school. If they don't go to school, they don't get money. In the meantime, they'll all have jobs at the Sweetwater Grill. I think this is a better view. Yeah, for yeah. sure. We looked at it as a win-win. We think between the location and what we're going to be able to accomplish, you know, with the rivers and the music and the food. And then the music will blow right into everybody. We think it's a good one. We think it's a slam dunk. I'm Willis Willis, and I won the Texas Lottery. Sort of. 68-year-old Willis Willis was a hard-working handyman living from paycheck to paycheck, you know, enough for food, rent, utilities. And after that, we really had nothing. Today, Willis is practically a celebrity in Texas. Not because of what he won, but because of what was stolen from him. It all started on May 29, 2009, when Willis bought a Texas lottery ticket at the Lucky Market, just as he had for the past five years. I just played on the Fridays, $5 a week, every week. 
95% of the time I go to Lucky's to buy my tickets. The next afternoon, Willis returned to the market to have the clerk check his numbers. I gave it to the guy because that's what we did at all time. He goes back and say, yeah, you want $2, are you $2, thank you. And I took the $2 and I left. The moment those $2 changed hands, Willis's life would never be the same. Weeks later, the Texas Lottery Commission got a tip that Willis might have had his true winnings stolen. That's when Willis got a call from a lottery investigator. It is. And he said, there's a possible fraud that is happening, and there's a possibility you want some money from the lottery. Turns out, the store clerk lied. Willis's ticket was worth a whole lot more than two bucks. Incredibly, he won a whopping $1 million. But the clerk kept the ticket for himself. I never suspected this guy cheated me. And I knew everyone in there. And every time I entered the store, it was always, how are you doing, Mr. Willis? When agents checked the store surveillance cameras, they suspected sabotage. They still needed proof that Willis had played the winning numbers. And Willis had it. He kept his old playlists. Well, it has been investigated. The tickets, play slips that you had, has proven you to win them. By the time the Lottery Commission discovered the fraud, it was too late. The lying store clerk, 25-year-old Pankaj Joshi, had already cashed in the ticket. He wired $750,000 in after-tax winnings to various bank accounts, then fled for his native Nepal, a country in the Himalayas with plenty of places to hide. It's unreal. It's dog eat dog, and I'm going to get my portion and forget you. That's when the lottery turned the case over to the Austin DA's office for criminal prosecution. When Joshi came in to claim the prize, he had to give a bank account number to the lottery commission to have the funds wired to his bank account. And once you have that first bank account, it's a money trail that you follow. While Patty and her team followed the money trail and pursued the criminal case against Joshi. It was unbelievable. That had happened. Willis and, uh, decided to get his own lawyers and take the Texas Lottery Commission to court. But did Willis make a fatal error that led the lottery to rule against him? It was just short and sweet and to the point. You didn't produce the ticket. What are the odds of winning the Powerball jackpot? Have you talked to Ethan? After he yelled at me, I just blocked him. I miss all my siblings and God's on your side. Ship free every and has protein. It's not food, it's I worry about mo 95 million. 90 day fiance. Sunday at 8 on TLC. What are the odds of winning the Powerball jackpot? One in 195 million. I'm Willis Willis, and I won a million dollars in the Texas lottery. Sort of. <laughs> After a thief stole Willis's million-dollar winnings and fled to Nepal, Willis decided he needed legal help to get his money back. It was unbelievable that it happened. First, the legal team tried to get the lottery commission to reissue the million-dollar prize, but the commission said no way. The Texas lottery told Willis, unbelievably, that he wasn't the winner. That's just basically what they said. The way, I mean, it was just short and sweet and to the point. You didn't produce the ticket. What they say is, we've decided that the winner of the Texas lottery is Joshi, the guy who stole the ticket. We've already written him a check, and we're not going to write another one. This ought to be a major red flag to the people who play the lottery in the state of Texas. Willis made a big mistake when he handed his million dollar winning ticket to the store clerk. He forgot to sign the ticket. Unless you've signed that ticket, you're subject to the clerk stealing the ticket and turning it in, and the clerk signing it and turning it in and claiming to be the winner. While Willis's lawyers filed an appeal against the Lottery Commission to get the million dollar check reissued, the DA's office followed the money trail and managed to locate and freeze Joshi's US bank accounts. We were able to locate $365,000 in these various accounts. That 
amount that we seized returned to Mr. Willis. Altogether, the DA's office was able to return $395,000 to Willis. There was another 300 that was frozen, that remains frozen in Nepal, and we're working very diligently for Willis to try to get that money back to him. Although still thought to be in Nepal, Joshi was indicted on a second-degree felony charge of fraud and is now considered a fugitive. Even though Willis hasn't received all his winnings, he's overjoyed to be able to pay for his daughter Cheyenne's college tuition. Hey, so there you go. This is good. You knocked it right in there. <laughs> Thinking about uh, my daughter, you know, getting her taken care of. That was my only, only concern. I got accepted into Arizona State University. I am so excited to go to college. One more of Willis's dreams came true as well, when his lawyer surprised him with a brand new set of golf clubs. It brought tears to my eyes. I appreciate it. And uh, <clears throat> I'm going to continue playing for a long time. <laughs> Nowadays, his buddies say Willis is hitting the ball better than ever. His old clubs, uh, he hit them pretty fair, but he hits these ones a lot better. You just hope that Willis gets everything that he's supposed to get. And uh, hadn't changed him, he's still the same person. Along with his new golf clubs, Willis finally got his day in court. His lawyers recently won the suit against the Lottery Commission, but the Lottery appealed the case, and Willis still doesn't have all of his money. I still don't have it in my hand, <laughs> but it's closer than what it was months ago. In the meantime, Willis is moving on. He used some of the recovered winnings to buy a new home in El Paso to be closer to his daughter at college. I feel more secure about my dad living closer to me just a few hours away. Now Willis and his daughter are looking forward to a bright future. New friends, new neighbors, and uh, relax. That's what I'm looking forward to. When your numbers come up, get ready for the ride of your life. For the pick with 15, the best part is sharing their good fortune with each other. You know, how fast is this one, you? Well, I've had it up to 200. A win bought Kim Haggerty a new home in the Rockies and a chance to open the Sweetwater Grill. For the luckiest man in Rhode Island, Keno is still the gift that keeps on giving. You know, people say, why do you play? Why wouldn't I? <laughs> I, I constantly win. And with the lottery win, Willis finally has time to indulge his passion. Good shot, bro. I intend to continue to play as long as I can, as long as I can walk. <laughs> One way or the other, winning the lottery will change your life forever.